We need to record the founding anchor partners that were here and, and making this future happen. So we're just going to take a quick informal group photograph up right here so that uh, we, can, we can post this for the public. It will, of course, be openly licensed under the Free Cultural Works approved t shirt license. T shirt. T shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? We can't wait up here. Oh, it's the photo. Oh, photo. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were going to have it in front of the uh, protest. Oh, that's the old thing. It's like 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 the old Colleagues, I, I will distribute the photo to everyone so we don't all have to send our cameras.
just busy conferring because we need to get the names of the folk who are contributing to move move this forward. I and mean, we have a very elaborate table that was developed by the project planning group. But I'm just a concern um, that we may not be able to complete the entire table. So, so my suggestion is the following: that we identify a key <coughs> convener from this meeting for the project planning group who then will undertake to identify the institutional representatives for the other the components that we need, need to, uh, to fill out. Does that seem like a reasonable uh, approach to move forward in terms of our yeah. current mm -hmm. time frames? Yeah. 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 Okay. So what we need, well, the names that we've got so far from, from, from you is who, Dr. Angela Murphy. That's a special role on the evaluation. I wouldn't see Angela as a company in which she will coordinate you know, the evaluation from the contact people. Right, so that's all good. Do you want to um, nominate someone else? Do you you? Well, David and I are up in the final story of the default people. Rory, are you happy with the uh, AU? Am I happy with the AU? <laughs> yes, but, but we should yes and no. We'll discuss it over a beer. Yes. <laughs> um, but in terms of the contact person who will then help identify hopefully. Yeah, so AU. far it's me to like find a sucker. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, TRU? Happy. Uh, SNHU, Kevin, right? Yeah, that's yep. good. Uh, no one will nominate you, confident with that, or happy with that. A target colleague, um, Robin, will you stand in there? Message, not uh, a founding action partner. Arco, I will follow up with Arco. BC campus, uh, shall we nominate Dave? Paul. <laughs> or Paul? Yeah, nominate Paul. Do you want you to drink it? Or Oscar? Oscar. 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 It could be one or the other, I would think. Yeah. Right, let's just give me a second, ask David. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll end the section with David, right? Dwayne, to ask. Matt, how are you? David is still with us. NMIT? Yep. Great. I suppose it would be 
for you too. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of convening our group, if we've got everyone uh, re-talk in the group, and Kevin's the one with the sort of project management background that's prepared to do if people are comfortable with that, how does the convener? Are you still happy with that? Kevin, okay, well, I'll lie as with you around, you know, to help pull out the PM related aspects of the table in terms of getting the ownership of the money and part. Sure. And, what, and how we work, you saw what we did with Anchor Partner statements, right? And we, we publish them openly as we receive them, and you'll be noticed by your answers. Now it's easy. All good. Okay. Yeah, I think it enables us to move forward as soon as we can. Uh, okay, so, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm just not clear. So, how are we going to decide? So we'll volunteer to be involved in different aspects of the logic model. Yeah. Look, at, at, at this point, it is, is, is a commitment that this anchor person will help identify the relevant roles of four people relating to the larger metric of the project lab. Okay. So the different things within this model, and sure. what we're saying is you might not be mm. the person that's doing this in your organization, but we need a, a contact person that agrees to follow through and get us the right names. The different components that you volunteer as an organization to contribute to. Mm -hmm. So it's really about, if you mentioned a tapestry or a matrix of things that we've got to get done, it's filling the matrix sure. with the right people to get it done. Because mm -hmm. we're going to spread the load across our, our institutions. And we've tried, Kevin's got a model with a one page overview which will just chunk the main level, not the dependencies within, but just say the curriculum. So there's an example, you know, you know, example of it's quite a detailed, you know, table, you see. And then and we will elaborate that so it becomes a sort of reference point. But the project plan will require elaboration and timelines, but it will enable us to start filling out the matrix and creating the matrix. Everyone feeling comfortable? <laughs> okay, what I want us to do just in terms of wrapping up uh, is just two quick, well, two things. One, just to re reiterate our, uh, the OER Foundation's open, transparent uh, and governance model in terms of how we work, um, because I do think that's important. Um, everything we do, we do under radical, well, using principles of radical transparency. Our funding, our budgets, our decisions, the plans we put together are all done openly and transparently in the wiki. Everything we do, you can see. Even to the extent of our grant proposals that we put out for donor funding for what we do, we develop openly as open content licensed materials. And the reason we do that, and people often tell me, Wayne, you're crazy to do that because what if somebody steals your good idea for funding? But you must remember this is an open model. If somebody can do a, or, or complete an open project that is contributing to the OER University Network quicker, faster, cheaper than we at the OER Foundation can do, they are the people that should be doing the project. And because the outputs would be openly licensed, um, we benefit by that. Um, and, and, so we, and, and that's why the model works. Open is it's upside down thinking, but it actually works. And we have a very good example. Um, at the Basque University, to Tecri, uh, developed and published a report on the very first meeting. It was openly licensed. Uh, I, I can't remember if it was CC by CC by so I don't remember what it was. But it was an open license. Um, when we were approached by the Hewlett Foundation to consider an application for the OVR University, we were able to take that whole report and rework it and remix it for the uh, funding proposal to Hewlett. So it is just a very, very good example of how this radical openness and radical transparency gets, enables us to do things with incredible speed. 
And to him, the OER Foundation is an institution that has two full-time staff. That's it. That's all we've got. However, we have a group of hundreds of volunteers around the world that contribute, and now with the OER University Partner Network, um, that the you know, staff that are working towards a, you know, a greater goal of openness. So that's why the model works. And I, I just need to put that out there, because what we're going to, to uh, discuss now is a, uh, an issue of funding. And one of the things I learned, I grew up in ICTs for development, and I spent most of my working career working in Africa. And one of the things I learned very early in my career is that all good projects get funded in the long run. All good projects do get funded. Um, don't design projects with the purpose of getting funding. Design solid projects that can stand on their own. And if you get funding, it will help you achieve your aims a lot quicker. But you need to have the strategy right. What I've included in the folder is the, the next generation learning challenge wave three bit. Uh, I was alerted to this by a, a number of people in the field. Um, and if you work through the proposal, I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity to read it, but I will highlight certain uh, aspects um, here. And if you look at these aspects, it, it would appear that the OER University Network model is in fact a very, very strong proposal for what next, the next generation wave the challenge is all about. Strategic, and, and this is the, uh, sort of the, the donor equivalent of venture capital. So what it's about is getting you know, strategic money to get important things in place in order to achieve long-term goals. The proposal is for up to a million US dollars. The first uh, shortened proposal needs to be submitted by uh, February 9th. The real uh, project is about on page, on, on page 3, is really tackling the iron triangle we've been talking about. How do we reduce, reduce cost of post-secondary provision in the college sector? How do we improve quality? Um, and how do we widen the access? So it's really about the iron triangle, and these are underlying principles of what we are doing with the OER University Initiative. The really important bits are uh, on page five. And at the bottom of page five, we have to develop a model which will achieve the 55 five targets. What are the 55 five targets? We have to design a delivery system for post-secondary education that will achieve a completion rate of 50% of the students enrolling in the model. Okay. Those of us that have been in distance education know that that is an achievable target. The five, the model that we design must not cost the student for the year's study. Uh, was that for the year's study? Yes, for the year's study should not be in excess of 5,000 to 7,500 US dollars. Wearing my accountant hat, I am reasonably sure that one could get a model like this working for roughly for a year's study for between 1,000 to 2,000 US dollars if we're smart. That, I mean, those are the parameters. And the second five is that this model, over a five-year period, sh uh, should serve and uh, you know, 5,000 students. Now, I, I, you know, I, I ask you, um, in, in fairness and reasonableness, do you think that the OER University <coughs> concept could achieve those targets? OK, so here. If you go and look at page seven, there's a little, bit, there's a little more detail in terms of the parameters of this funding proposal. Um, no later, and the delivery no later than fall of 2013. Okay, we've already got a program outline for a prototype, which we, you know, we collect in very broad terms. We already have that on the table. The intended outcomes, we've had a look at that. Um, 
the student population in terms of eligible for Pell Grants, I have no idea what that is. And this is why we need to rely on our colleagues from the US. Um, the learning model, um, and, and gee, this is going to be tough. Um, at least 100%, oh, between 25 and 100% to be delivered online. This is going to be very tough for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I mean, the, 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 the model is looking at how K-12 learners, school learners, can qualify for student credit. Now, I know here at New Zealand, we've got to report the STAR program. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and so then already there are models where we can, can do this within the network. And so, um, you know, that's it's just a very, very interesting proposal. And of course the requirement uh, is, and, and, and I agree, it needs to be a US-based institution to lead. <coughs> the RFP that, uh, does encourage uh, consortiums. Um, and uh, we have a pretty interesting international consortium. Uh, we represent uh, six countries. We have 13 institutions from six countries working on four continents. That's, uh, that's, that's where we're at. And so the thinking here today is just to brainstorm a couple of ideas in terms of if we were to put a funding proposal in, which I believe we should, what are the strategic components of the model that we need in order to achieve future success? In other words, what are the bits of the model which we actually don't have in place now or that we can't easily achieve within our normal operations um, to move forward? Because I think that's the smartest place to invest uh, strategic money uh, if we're thinking of long-term sustainability. And the kinds of areas, you know, that immediately spring to my mind are things like some of the infrastructure components around Academic Volunteers International. Because that's a piece of the puzzle we don't have in place. Um, other components may be how we do cross-border articulation or institutional understanding as an example, because we don't have that in place yet. So what are the other things that you know, we kind of don't have in place? I mean, things to find course development or course design it's something cost, I, I don't think it's a strong, a strong proposal in my personal view. You may, you may have other, other views around that. So it's just a bit of initial thinking. And so the open question is, what are the strategic projects we collectively think are worthy of preparing and submitting a proposal? And number two, whether our American partners would be prepared to lead an, an open proposal uh, for the next gen wave three grants under an open content license. And that open content license bit is very, very important because if it's not under an open content license, if we are unsuccessful with the bid, it makes it very difficult to reuse <coughs> and develop for other sources of funding for strategic work. So those are my ideas and it's really, I'm just opening, opening it up for discussion. And I can, I'd really appreciate your views, uh, your views on this. <coughs> Thoughts? Just a strange question, perhaps, Wayne. Do you have any sense of what sort of um, other bodies are going to be in this space? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say because, uh, and I'm speaking openly to the public, right, so everybody can, can hear me. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to know what others are doing in, in this space. I can only speculate what others might be doing. One of the things I've noticed in, in, in the open education movement is the total lack of collaboration between the open projects when it comes to developing funding proposals, because it's just totally ludicrous. A guiding principle which I've used in the OER Foundation is you know, every week I get one or two requests to sign a letter of endorsement for some or another funding proposal. Because I want to get the OER Foundation's name on the proposal to increase the chances of getting, getting money. I have one requirement, and that is, will you release your, uh, your grant proposal on an open content license? If that answer is no, my response is no, we don't collaborate. 
And it becomes a very powerful filter because the people that we work with are the people that are very committed to achieving what we want to achieve. And I don't waste eons of time with failing operations. So from that perspective, and, and, and the advantage is if we do now develop the proposal openly and say, this is what we're doing. We've held a meeting. You know, so many people got together. This is what we are doing. It's openly licensed. If people want to join us, then. Well, that was part of my thinking that there's an opportunity there for um, other people to see the potential and, and possible interactions and uh, things with us. They may see it in a different value, in a different light, across the scale, and come on board as um, Absolutely. Look at the strength of the application. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we'll use a share alike provision on the proposal because if somebody does steal the idea, um, they've got to attribute. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's a, there's a history here. I mean, this is a project that's developed and matured over a period of time. I and mean, this is not something that's happened overnight. You know, we, 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 have, we have a track record. So that's a good question, Robin, yeah. Um, obviously, and what I like about the next gen proposals, you know, the first round of proposal is actually quite a simple proposal. It's really sort of an initial. You know, this is what we plan to do. And if you are so then select, you then are invited to do more detailed work. So I think I think it's a good model. Is there a problem in that this cert this is specific to the United States? Since I don't think I don't think that it's a problem that it's specific to the United States. Specifically because it's an open model. If you get it right in the US, it will export rather well. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's my that's my gut feel. Yeah. I have a feeling having worked on grants in the United States as well as here in the UK and Europe, that um, it would depend on our US leader as to how open they were to working with us. But for example, in both Europe and probably other countries, and certainly this one, what might happen is if we get a nice proposal here, we might put in another one alongside it and say, we want to join in. Where not committed under this because the money is targeted at the USA, but they're happy for us to join in and complement the work. And this is what we would do with essentially your New Zealand money or your European money and so on. That works with the European Commission as well. Yeah. It works federally as well. Yeah. So um, that's one way of thinking about it. And I, I, I also firmly believe that in a globally connected world, an international consortium, uh, <coughs> as we are, um, is a much stronger proposal than a single institution, but in, at any rate. And, and to be quite honest, I actually don't care who gets the money. I don't really that. What I care about is getting the stuff done that we need to move this forward. That's my personal view. Others may differ. I differ. I'm true. I'm we want the main <laughs> 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 um, yeah. yeah, but um, you, you, I mean, I need to get that out on the table. This is not OER Foundation trying to chase a million dollars. That's not what this is about. So, would the money, I mean, just to to Allen and Kevin, mm -hmm. would the money be targeted and financed within your institution? Do you see any problem with that? Are your institutions already thinking of bidding for some money in the work? Do part of the work. Um, uh, we, we are putting in a proposal to bid. in the same position. I'm trying to pull up emails that I've got from uh, okay. <coughs> my people around. I'm not sure if it's the same grant, though. This one's listed as 3B. Um, yeah, this is 3B. It's, it's a separate grant. Yeah. Okay, so I need to check. I've got some detail in my email about Wave 3 funding, breakthrough models for college readiness and completion, but I sense yeah. that's slightly different then. We've put in, well, not to this, but to others, two proposals, and we've uh, been rejected in both. And uh, we've also been accepted in both too. We've, I don't think 
yeah. I think that they judge them on their merits. And, uh, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I also know that BC Campus is also a next gen recipient as one of the partnerships and one of the previous bids. Yeah, okay, I, so, I, mean, I don't think you're necessary. Yes, at this point in time, we're not necessarily going to ask, be able to ask the question around our US partners, which is fine. Um, so you, I mean, you'll need to go back to your institutions and, and find out. Right. And, and, and that's good. This is due the 11th though? Right. I know, but there are three rounds. Oh, okay. We'll be so looking at February the 9th. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, okay. We are suggesting the February a bit, yeah. Okay. Is it possible that if your grants were for the 11th of November and were not successful, that you would feel That's more comfortable? My machine for the 11th. Because I think the deadlines of the response to the finalists, I think, are included in the show of the day. So the people who applied for the November deadline would know mm -hmm. maybe before the February deadline. Is that true? Okay. Um, yeah, we need to look, look into that deep. So we've got a couple of activities to do here. Next open question. Would Anchor Partners uh, feel comfortable if I were to approach and recruit another US institution uh, to possibly submit a bit uh, around our, our work here? And I'm not saying I'll get it right, but uh, any help you can offer my ground the 23rd. Well, the second one was one that we had to yeah. be open no, to. The deadlines of the uh, 11th, I mean, yeah. 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 they'll be notified on the 23rd. Yeah. 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 The finalists. deadline for the finalists to be announced on the November 11th is November the 23rd. So that would be good Next time week, yeah. to say, well, we'll bid for February, February the 9th. And the funding date for the first round is February the 8th. So we wouldn't have time if you made the final. <laughs> no. But I, I think there's a generic thing that we should probably be preparing a, a, yeah, a proposal anyway. But I, but I wouldn't say that because if, if, if they are finalists, they can put in for the other one as well. So yeah, then we get it, won't, it would not affect putting in another one, would not affect the final decision. I, I agree, but I would usually work for an institution that would not allow competing. Yeah. as a matter of principle. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that approach, but some institutions do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so, so that, I mean, we know that's uh, Is it a, a critical part issue that you need to decide on. If, if we were to find a, a, a sporting partner, including our existing you know, uh, mm -hmm. US partners, what areas do you think we should focus on if we were to submit a bid? Which would be developed openly and transparently for everybody to see? Any particular I, ideas? I, I, would, uh, I, I would strongly support that we go in for the testing because we know that funders are very interested in... Uh, they have identified that the main problem with OERs is uh, they're not being used and that the, there doesn't seem to be any sustainable model for learners using OER um, for getting accreditation. Mm -hmm. And so for a robust testing scheme, I, I think that uh, they'd be very interested in that, that if we could uh, apply for that, uh, um, I think it would be a, a one that they would look at very seriously. Mm -hmm. Not that there were another uh, mm -hmm. Uh, things that we could look at but, uh, that that one be, or even or even we could make it more generic for the OERU and have that as one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So testing that's I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah. But the is the evaluation of the pilot. Is that mm -hmm. right? Is that understanding? No, no, I'm looking at testing uh, is uh, computerized, uh, yeah, to computerized yeah, assessment. The major strategic focus of the bid. It's really about assessment then. Well, that's what I... I'm hearing two things. I would, I would suggest that uh, it would be about uh, automated uh, testing and assessment, uh, um, how we can uh, uh, cost effectively uh, assess students for giving them credentials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I would tend to think that that as part of a grain that would be, would be more attractive. I mean, the money is quite large, so mm -hmm. I would be comfortable putting up the whole model, including the volunteers and the assessment processes, but also to say the contribution in kind from the partners is the course development and we're not looking for you know, new resources. I mean, we're doing it anyway. I mean, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, I think, would be more appealing than a, a component of a bigger model. They've got to understand the model as a whole. So I think we should be and then say the partners in kind contribution is this, and these are the other components that will expedite the development. And I think that could work. Mm -hmm. Are you asking about how we're going to assess the students for this grant? No. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Okay. I mean, the, the kind of automated testing and assessment is part of a bigger model. Uh -huh. And I think it needs to be included in. And because, and the reason for that is it's, it's a way to scale a project like this from an economic sustainability point of view by order of magnitude. Yeah, well, perhaps that, that should be the bigger project sustainability and business models that will drive a long-term future, yeah. and that would include the sort of thing mm -hmm. as yeah. a component. No, I think yeah, as, a, as, as a group, to agree on it, it would have to be the, the OERU model, and this would just be one aspect of it. Mm. Yeah. And the thing is, we've got the logic model on the table anyway. Um, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's the project. Mm -hmm. Plus, we've got a, a pretty, pretty we've progressed pretty far with detailed planning uh, of a prototype. There aren't many people around the world that can get that right in the time frames that they are to submit a proposal. So if we were to focus on assessment and assessment for credit, would the funding the million dollars be in part used as a source of the scholarships that we're talking about for the students who are in the um, prototype? Potentially yes, but uh, um, I mean potentially yes. Uh, I mean one can include it in there, but I'm, to be honest, I think You've got to be very careful, as A, from a sustainability point of view, but also shooting yourself in the foot proverbially with your bid. So if you're asking for scholarships of the $5,000 or whatever per student for scholarships, you're actually proving that your model is not sustainable because you're dependent on the grant funding for making the thing work. I think we can drive along with $5,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ab absolutely. One laptop per child, you know. But what I'm saying is, um, the scholarship should be limited to 100 students. Yes. In other words, don't make yes. the, the, fun, the funding proposal scholarships. So it's actually part of the process to design the model. I mean, what makes worth makes worth our effort as the OER Foundation to actually draft and put you know put the time and effort into their proposal for somebody to go and get the money for them is I want to see the strategic components of the model being built that we don't have. So that, and it's a script, it's, it's, it's scenario planning, that's what it is. Um, we know the stuff we've got and we know the stuff we can achieve. What we don't know is the strategic elements, how quickly we can get that, like automated testing is a complex problem. Um, like getting infrastructure for academic volunteers international is a complex problem. And so if you get the money to make that stuff happen, it's openly licensed. You know, then we've got the pieces of this puzzle. We get the OER new operational in a flock, we get done for it. But uh, another suggestion that we could also develop the free courses for laying the foundations for success. It's a sort of preparation part. And at USQ, David runs the Open Access College. And if you'd like to tell us about the tertiary preparation program, but one of the things is that it prepares students for a reasonable chance of success. Okay, well, um, I, I mean, these sorts of courses have been mentioned by a few other participants here that I've had a couple of chats with people like that. Essentially, um, uh, courses that are non-award courses, but to prepare students to undertake tertiary studies successfully, and they've got a pretty good track record of doing that, and they are uh, generally almost totally in a format that are available as OERs. Um, and uh, like really for the OER, as I see it, for the OERU platform to be really successful, we need to think about uh, the sorts of studies that a lot of students might need to undertake in order to uh, 
assure them of success once they, once they formally enrol in undergraduate courses. Uh, so uh, we do have a number of basically tertiary preparation courses, generic type courses um, in mathematics and general studies, academic communications and so on, uh, which we can you know, make available um, on the OER U Wiki platform, uh, if you like, as a precursor for people who may be thinking about the K-12 papers. So that could help a lot for the preparation of K-12 for the OER U model, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, we also have a safety net for people who jump into the OERU and can't go anywhere because they lack some of the skills. But it could also say, well, you're not making progress here, but this is available. So as well as preparing, yeah. it can be a fallback safety net for students who might find this struggle to you know, deal with the materials that we put up. That's right. I mean, what, one of the other things that I've mentioned here is that the need for kind of a bit of um, advice, advisory type of scheme for, for the people who may well consider enrolling through OERU. And maybe part of that scheme is, hey, we don't think you're necessarily going to cope very well by you know, jumping straight into some of these um, first year undergraduate courses. Do these preparatory courses first of all, they're not a war, but they're going to give you a good chance of succeeding further down the track. Yeah. Well, in, in the same way that we don't have a Bachelor of General Studies, we actually have a Certificate of Tertiary Studies, so we could award those types of courses. Oh, nice. And, and nice. And for, yeah. nice. I mean, at the present time, these courses, if you complete them successfully, you're guaranteed entry into all of our undergraduate programs and lots of other Australian institutions as well. It's very small. They're actually on license to a couple of places here in New Zealand. Uh, they're available as OERs on the Open Courseware Consortium site, or some of them are available there at the present time. Um, but I think this would be a uh, good platform to have them on. Well, I, th I, I think, think that's, that's great, much great much but I don't see how it fits into the grant. Oh, of course, one thing We'd be doing I'm that sure. anyway, wouldn't we, if these are all ERs and we need them? Oh, no, no, we do. I mean, this is the beauty of it, we can be doing it anyway. Yeah. But one of the uh, questions they're asking us to respond to is this K K-12 tertiary transition. Yeah, okay, and we have the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Got stuff. Yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it gets to the strength. Yeah. Um, there's a statement in here, I'd love to spend time reading this whole thing, but there's a statement in here that refers to how um, we're not, the United States students are not competing, you know, we're, we're not doing as well as other parts of the world in certain areas in education. And I think that drawing on international uh, mm -hmm. coursework actually makes this quite unique and it exposes our students to international courses. So I actually think that if we, that that might give this some extra strength. Yes, makes very, very good. So that offering would be uh, pretty interesting actually and quite unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. Um, one of the things that I think might be important if we are going to include this K-12 aspect is to consider in amongst the international volunteers some very careful thought about adults and children uh, working together. Um, it's terribly important we don't, this is high risk type of thing we have, um, you know, ways of protecting children. And while these courses are good, we could be putting them in touch with the wrong people if we're not careful. Careful. No, that's uh, advice well, well received. So it's a, a challenge for everybody, but that needs to be taken into account. But I think the K-12 thing is for adults, isn't it? Uh, yeah, what, what we yeah, we wouldn't deal with, we're, I think we'd have all kinds of legal problems dealing with minors, so we wouldn't really deal with them at all. Mm -hmm. but there is some of that in here, I think, with my name, Colin Boyd. Yeah, and we can be very cognizant of, of the risks. Um, you know, in this space, I would see it as the kind of thing you see in year 13, kind of like taking one. Sort of university course. 
Yeah. Which which is in it's within our our in the in here as part of the model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I thank you very, very much for you know, the candid and, and, and open reflections. Uh, what I'm hearing is, you know, I'm keen to work on a proposal of sorts, and uh, it's more than likely that OER Foundation will move forward with this. Um, I will attempt to recruit uh, you know, an, an international American partner or partners with the clear understanding that our founding partners are most welcome and, and will be open you know, to continue. Um, and by the very nature of being part of it, you, know, you, you have to be part of it. But I mean, I do appreciate the dynamics of uh, funding. You know, we have an agency that relies on the you know, people about us as well. So uh, you know, I am familiar with that. So that's kind of the sense from where I'm sitting from the foundation's perspective. I, of course, welcome you know, anybody that has an interest in developing aspects of this kind of proposal to please join us. Uh, and the reason for this is very simple. Uh, funding opportunities continue to arise. and, and you know, if we get this right, we've got a bunch of proposals ready to take us forward. And the point is we actually got to do this stuff for our plan. So this is not wasted. This is really a, you know, an opportune time to actually think through the plan of what we've discussed over these, these last two days. Make sense, everybody? Is everybody happy? Is anybody opposed to? I'm just thinking that funding around the training of the volunteer tutors yeah. is, is something that is a start-up that we might... And, 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 that, and that's a very good example because we don't have you know, all the OERs and resources available for the training of, the, of these folks. That's a very good example of a strategic project, mm. I think, yeah. Yeah, I like that. And I think that volunteer tutoring is an innovation in itself. So just getting it started is yeah. worthy of funding. Yeah. And look, the other, the other part is, I mean, there's a European Commission that's happening with the OER Test Initiative. It's a key number of players in this space. Uh, and, and for us, the important thing is the day of educating this to work. That's what's important for us from the foundation's perspective. Great. Okay, so we hang over forever. Thank you. What, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> um, yesterday morning, we, um, we started off with uh, some objectives, um, and uh, prior to that, we had a welcome from our Tanga Whenua um, with Huata, and Huata talked about the phases of the moon and the full moon and that, uh, the effects that has on people in terms of lunacy. <laughs> I won't say that we've been behaving like lunatics, but we've been very, very sharp in our thinking and our processes and our activities over the last two days. Um, I'm, I'm personally astonished at the, um, the interactions and the, the value and the nature and the way those interactions have happened and have gone forward. I, I put the kind of challenge out there yesterday that you know that we need to be constructive and work on the you know the things we needed to work on because we didn't have a lot of time um, and we've done that and we've done that fantastically you know the groups I've been in and the uh, larger groups and the interactions uh, from the people here and from my point of view the people externally as well that have been feeding in and I've been following the Twitter, Twitter feed you know, and uh, the, uh, the contributions that the external participants have made, uh, thank you for those that have just been great. And uh, we, we all seem to be on the same page on this. So I'm not even going to go through the objectives. We set some, set some objectives for the, for the planning session. Well, we haven't necessarily met them, but we've made some significant progress towards uh, those, and we've got a planning process in place, which is, uh, I think, uh, a good work, and we've got some really good longer term strategies that will build on that and we've got, I think, a very committed, um, politic, committed <laughs> uh, group of partners that will make this happen. So from my point of view, from the OER Foundation's point of view, from where we've come from with three anchor partners to 13 and the external people with you, I think it's just astonishing. So I can't say any more than that. Thank you all. It's been astonishing. But what I'd like to do is open the floor to you guys so that you can give some feedback and um, tell it how it is. Thank you.
remembering that we've got drinks and 10 minutes. We've <laughs> <laughs> got drinks and bibles out there in 10 minutes, so but please take the time <laughs> to, to oh, share. I'd like to thank the, um, the original triad or whatever you are for the brains behind this. I mean, it's an exciting concept and for opening it up to the rest of us. And the organisation of this meeting here, we all managed to get here and um, be videoed <laughs> in the <laughs> open. <laughs> Thank you very much for all the organisation and for, as I say, for the innovation and stimulation. Sorry, and I, I neglected to thank Pia and our new Splash people, camera operators, for their work. Thank you, it's been fantastic. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank the OER Foundation and Wayne and Robin for being here because no way could I have become a member of this because our university has in no way committed themselves to this but as an FT4WB member I'm here and I'm, I hope I can I mean I was just talking to Wayne I was telling him I'm personally I'm thinking whether my college can offer one of the courses that's already on OER as a certificate course next session and then that can input into this so I'll try for that that's Thank you very much, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pick up an already available material and use that. I mean, I have to prepare the assessment tools over the next few months, and then I can set it going next August. That's what I plan to do. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I mean, and let me tell you, I had a tough time getting here because the New Zealand uh, <laughs> consulate <laughs> won't let me come in. <laughs> Yeah, it, it took a uh, lot of effort <laughs> from Robin and uh, what's her name? Rhonda. Rhonda. They had to work very hard to get me here. My immigration was ringing me at 10 o'clock at night and I thought it was a telemarketer. <laughs> 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 yeah. And the reason, I mean, you wouldn't believe this. They it. wanted everything in hard copy. They won't accept mm -hmm. any email applications or the email invitation that OER have sent me. That they, I mean, they didn't accept it. They said we want, you know, black and I mean, blue ink signatures, and those papers had to come from here, there, and you know, and, and I said, look, I'm the last four, five years, wherever I've traveled, I've used the. E I mean, we won't travel by what comes to us to mail. But no, New Zealand, uh, <laughs> we want everything in part. Some improvements to be made. <laughs> I think this is a great example showing that no matter what, um, OER and OBSTAR has made everything possible to make it happen, which is kind of what we were discussing yesterday over dinner, and we were concluding on being um, disillusioned that we will believe that this will work and um, it will happen, uh, but I think what I've seen happening over the last two days, and especially today, people from different countries, institutions, the first day we all had a different idea and concept of what it was OERU and what it will probably look like or work, and today, by the end of the day, we are all determined that we're going to make it happen. So, I think we all deserve a big congratulations. <laughs> working together. So, well done, everyone. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank everybody for saying thank you. Thank <laughs> 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 you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, uh, too, that um, the to have UNESCO with us, to have the Commonwealth of Learning, as well as our colleague for it, it makes it, um, it makes this very much more worthwhile, more strategic, and to have your voices uh, to remind us what our mission is, that it's very inclusive. Wayne's not slow <laughs> in telling us about that, but to have you actually with us makes a little difference. So thank you for the supporting initiative. Any other comments? It is warm in this room. <laughs> there is cold drinks. So at least there's any other comments, uh, perhaps we can go out and 
Just uh, socialise and have a drink. A little. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.